Right. All right, so the announcement, quick announcement that I wanted to make that I didn't remember is if you have a new membership application or a renewal of your current membership, with Jim being out this night, we're going to ask Perry, Perry wait for us, back in the back, you can see him and he'll take your renewal application or your new membership application. Uh, we'd certainly appreciate that uh, if you haven't accomplished that uh, renewal. All right, Ray, we are all ready for you to, to teach us all about fox hunting. We'll turn the mic over to Ray.
see, there's uh, sneaky ways. You could use your body shielding. You could take the antenna off and wrap the radio in foil, put it behind you, and that kind of business. Thank you. David Campbell used to like tin cans. He'd put his radio in the tin can uh, to shield it. I made a tin can out of a piece of uh, yeah. gutter. And, uh, I got one that made two. Okay, it's, uh, so it's, uh, that's another toy there. And he used to like, uh, he didn't always take a compass with you so you could get a beam heading so many degrees from where you are. And, that's a help. And print a map before you take off. David liked these uh, field strength meters, little cheap CB field strength meters. I've never used them before. Uh, it would probably work. I played with this before I left. I plugged this in, into my antenna, VOM uh, on milliamps, and you'd be amazed. Uh, that microwave it may be uh, 45 milliwatts. Walk out this far it may be zero milliwatts. So if you're on top of something, this is a possibility too. This is the are mean. They really are. They do anything they can to mess you up. Do 
I ain't one time people saw it. Fishing, and his fishing pole was the hand sound. Seriously. I put a, an old car with the uh, antenna goes up and down. I hooked my radio to that antenna, you know. One time I did it on my motorcycle. You know, I had a little antenna sticking up in my sock behind my bag. Uh, so boxes are mean. Uh, I guess that's it. Yeah, I mean, do a few pictures of the thing here and I'll be done. These may go way back. That may be Dennis right there. I don't know. There's Michael and uh, I don't like on that guy. I know who he is. Yeah, that was Dwayne's um, box he made out of an ammo can. He's got the whole shebangs in there, a big log chain to secure it. And that was me and my motorcycle when I did it, did it that way. And he has some kind of program to be fancy with his uh, triangulation. And that's the attenuator that I built that's on that wooden antenna. That took a while. And this is switches on it. I need to guess decibels or whatever. And I've got it in my head to build another one. This is uh, how the uh, it takes three resistors in a triangle formation to uh, make a, a unit of uh, how much attenuation you want. And I'm thinking about putting that on a uh, rotary switch like this. I don't know if it'll work. Is it all be the same box? If it might, I don't know. That's, you have to do stuff to see if it works. If you just put a resistor in a can or put a a variable resistor, a pot in a can with a knob, it don't work. It, it'd be wasting your time. You gotta get something that's a, a real a real attenuator. And that was me making the case for it. <laughs> Two little parts to go uh, on the switches. And that's uh, the gang there at uh, I think it was at Wendy's on uh, 64. And that was that was my car. It was uh, the Wendy's. At, I think it was Wendy's. Park. I think. Uh, and that's usually how your layout looks in the trunk of a car. It takes a 12 volt battery, uh, two radios. Uh, oh, that's one thing I did forget. Uh, over there, I've got a. Um, It's a, um, I'll just get over here and show you. You gotta have some kind of an antenna. So it's a, get some ladder line and put it, and make a J pole out of it. That way you can put it up in a tree and get a, a lot of power out that way. Just get your rock and build it up, pull it up a little bit with a tree on the road. But it's just a uh, J pole made out of a ladder line. It's better to run uh, HTM extra low power, not even low power, because it's going it's to transmit for almost a minute, go off for maybe 20 seconds, come back on, do it again and again and again, and you could possibly burn your radio up. The cycle's not correct for that. That's somewhere around uh, Brother in that area, headed toward Wolf Chase. Uh, I didn't go to this one. That's, that was out at the. Uh, he actually put the transmitter on the Bellevue. Uh, Grounds by those three big crosses. I'm surprised he got away with that. Across the street. Yeah. 
Was you there? And that's them uh, talking about their results. Uh, we've had a lot of good folks do this. Then we just all fizzled out. One time when somebody was sitting on the uh, roof of the parking garage of the uh, Bad Deceased, you know, that was fun. I didn't find them. <laughs> I guess that's it. I'm out of pictures there. So that's, uh, that's it. That's, got any questions or need any help? I'm, I'm on the head counter. Right, thank you. Thank you. So, Ray, would you take a couple of questions? Hey, Ray, would you take a couple of questions? Does anybody have any questions for Ray? The question was, when do you want to do it? So, is anybody interested out there in doing a couple of fox hunts? Uh, some, okay. I got a fox. We, we, have, we have the tools. So, Ray, quick question that I have for you. What is the what kind of equipment do we need as hams to actually participate as fox hunters? Uh, <laughs> Back when I started, the attenuators were kind of far and few between. Uh, you had to stack them together, do crazy stuff. I had to make mine. But I've seen, I looked on the internet. There's you can buy them now. You can buy attenuators. Uh, so that you've got to have attenuation. You just once you get close to five watts, you're in trouble. You just go around in circles, get mad at yourself. So you got attenuation, you can basically keep going to to where you want to go and find a guy. You know, it, it's it's a thrill. It's a, uh, I left this part out. You don't think it's a competition, but it is. You're, <laughs> you're fighting to get there first. You know, it, it's a, you get a feather in your head if you do that. So uh, it, it's uh, you can make something. Just search for a. I love this thing. It, it's it's got much. It's a much better than uh, than the little three L cheapy thing there. Uh, this is really actually. A, I think it was power line came off a hundred year old power line or a telegraph line or something. That's what those are. Um, attenuation and a good antenna and uh, watch the meter on your radio. You don't have to be perfect on your, huh? It's, it's received, so you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have SWR. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's good for your own psyche. <laughs> so just to recap that, for the equipment that you need, you need an HT, some sort of um, attenuation, and some sort of directional antenna. Yeah. Those would be the three pieces of equipment. Four elements. So that would be the three pieces of equipment that, as a fox hunter, you would need to be able to fox hunt. Yeah, it'd be a, you need a thing like a Tycon, a, a fox hunt controller to uh, position So, would, as a hunter, would you need the fox, or would the fox provide the fox for the team for the activity? The, the, fox, the, uh, the fox has got to have this. Commercial. Okay. But the hunters, all you need is a hunter, an HT, attenuation, attenuation and some sort of directional antenna. So anyone with an HT can participate in a fox hunt. So uh, those of you that expressed interest, uh, let us know. We'll try to set something up. A couple of questions. So if, if you go back to one of those maps, you know, the, I, I assume that those were hunts, right? Um, how, did, how did you know how far out to go before you turned and... Turn the other uh, every couple of minutes you're stopping and taking another reading. Uh, There's usually a, four, a boundary. Uh, oh, normally yeah. it's about five miles. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think and five miles as far as you can go, but you you, you got to stop quite often to see if if the fox is to your right and you've gone too far. Yeah, so you're walking, but you're just walking that way. Uh, no, you're driving. You're doing a lot. You're driving. <laughs> Right, so you're driving real slow. <laughs> not, too, not too slow. You're. Uh, that's why you, people get all anxious and they want to go directly to it. The best way is to take a bean heading, go three miles away, take another bean heading, and see where they cross. That'll put you in the, in the vicinity. 
If you don't do that, they're going to do what you were talking about. You don't know where to stop. Right. Yeah, so it's a, it, it, it's all learning. Right. So there's another question in the back. It's not a question. This is a good thing to have on hand when somebody's microphone key is stuck and you don't know who's got the repeater tied up. <laughs> we, have, we, have done that. Real we, have done, we have done that. We have called people and said, which way is it from your house? <laughs> So the fox hunting, just to recap, Brad, the fox hunting is really based on the concept of triangulation. So you want to take a starting point, take a bearing, move, take another bearing, and you're going to make a triangle and see where the lines cross and start going towards that as the where you think the fox is and start doing that. That's, that's, a, that's a big wishful thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Once you actually get there, once you actually get there, he ain't where you think he's going to. It still may be. 200 yards either way, you know, it's uh, it, it's frustrating. It really is. It's good if the fox has got a big red truck like David. Did. <laughs> Joe? Yes, sir. Any questions? Go ahead. In one of the fox hunts, Bill Covington was the first to get to the fox with only an HD yeah. and using his body as shielding. So it can be done with just an HD, but you have to put it up against your body and, and see if it comes around and and when you get to the null, you go that, go back that way uh, to where the null is. And when you get really close, you can get you a small can or whatever will fit your HT. Take the antenna off and leave the, the top of the handy talkie just above the can. You want to shield as much of the handy talkie so that you can attenuate the signal because you're taking your antenna and pulling it off and you could body shield it with that. That's that's what I use a lot when I first started. Yes, sir. Hey, buddy. To answer your question, when I did fox hunts 30 years ago, I had a map for the city and I covered it in plastic. Laid the back of my stakes black. And it beam up. I get a reading. I draw a line. I drove I drove 90 degrees. Got another reading. Drew a line. Went 90 more. Drew a line and drove to that spot. And like you say, once you get there, then you've got to get to get to the handy talkie and do what they say and find it. I was I was successful in quite a, in, in several fox hunts that way. Instead of saying, oh, we got to go this way and going that way, and then you got to go this way, I did it on a map. Of course, I learned all that in the Army. So, you know, it was. It was uh, and that's, you know, you get, you get to the spot. And, uh, of course, we didn't have all the stuff like the Fox and everything. We, we used our mobiles in our car. You know, we transmitted every. 30 seconds every five minutes or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. I got between two buses, party buses one time. They were having a hard time. They didn't go past. They didn't go past both ends of the bus. So the signal would bounce off the bus. It was nowhere. Where it was coming from. Just, just hope that they don't put it next door to the railroad track. Yeah. Hopefully they don't put it next door to the railroad track. Pat Lane did put the put the antenna on the. He did put the antenna on the railroad track. That's what it was. And they, they were they were, all, they were working it all over. <laughs> so just to wrap that up, it sounds like fox hunting can be a lot of fun and a lot of fun social activity just to engage and have a good time. Um, definitely, we'd love to hear from the membership about your interest in, in fox hunting. Let us know. Put it on your signal report. Let us know. Just reach out. We'll see if we can't set something up. So I'll ask one last time, any last questions for our speaker, Ray? And then we'll move into our other presentation.